This is Duke University. My name is Arda Göknar. I'm the director of the Duke University Middle East Studies Center. And I have the honor today to be here with uh, Nobel Laureate in Literature, Orhan Pamuk. We've had a series of events around his visit to Duke University, and we're continuing the conversation today. Orhan, um, you do a lot of research with each of your novels. Can you talk a little bit about the process that's involved? Um, for each novel, I do different kind, sort of research. Um, for My Name is Red, I looked at 16th, 15th century um, Islamic manuscripts and illustrations. Or for snow, I went to northern eastern town of Kars where, um, to set a, uh, deliberately with an intention of setting a novel there. For uh, this novel, A Strangers in My Mind, um, which is about a street vendor, I had engaged in, with conversations about street vendors of Istanbul. I'm very happy that I did that. It was a very joyful, educative uh, process for me um, that I talked to people who sell rice and chicken, yogurt, um, boza, stuffed mussels, and many, many other things in streets of Istanbul. Then I also had long engaging conversations with waiters, retired policemen, mafia kind of um, people, uh, electric bill collectors, so forth and so on. Um, in a way, I was developing a new way of writing fiction. But of course, the value of the book does not come with this kind of what academics call uh, oral history. But the way that I transformed all that history also with my imagination. Um, uh, um, these conversations with the um, citizens of Istanbul who immigrated to town uh, starting from late 1950s 1960s and 70s um, also uh, gave me an idea about the form of the novel that it, I started the novel as a um, classical 19th century novel and decided as I did in My Name is Red too, to uh, um, um, include the first person singular narratives of the people that I talked to and change it around. So, um, so and, uh, although I'm getting old, the po uh, youthful postmodern <laughs> experimental writer is still alive and kicking. Uh, um, and this uh, way I developed a new, a sort of a modest new form for this novel. So the, um, uh, since 2006 and the Nobel Prize, you have two novels that have come out. The first one, uh, The Museum of Innocence, is an interesting project because it has many iterations. I wanted to see if you could talk a little bit about the process of writing a novel and then establishing a museum, and then the latest iteration is actually a film. Um, um, I have published a novel, Museum of Innocence, in 2008 and opened a real museum in central Istanbul in 2012. That is also called Museum of Innocence. The conceit was actually to open the museum at the same day the novel is published because more or less the novel um, is an annotated catalog of the museum um, um, uh, explaining to the visitors that why each object is picked up and the objects that are displayed in Museum of Innocence are the objects that the imaginary characters of the novel touch or um, landscapes and pictures or films or photos or postcards that the characters see. Thus, in an indirect way, it's a modest city museum of Istanbul between 1950s till the end of 20th century. Uh, um, the, um, a story, a love story, connects all the objects that are displayed in mu a Museum of Innocence. And in fact, I was writing the story as I collected objects to be displayed in the museum and uh, manipulating the story in such a way that the characters would use these objects. Um, it, it was an experimental project, okay, intertwining literature and perhaps a, a modest attempt to produce authentic art, perhaps because 
I am a failed artist, or between the ages of 7 and 22, I wanted to be a painter. But as I chronicled in my, my autobiographical essay book, Istanbul, suddenly a screw was loose in my head, <laughs> and I began in 1973. Uh, around the tame, same year and that, the character of um, hero of a strangeness in in, in my mind, Mevlut Karatash comes to Istanbul, I begin to write novels. In fact, you know, a strangeness in my mind chronicles 40 years of Istanbul, but it's not a historical novel because I was there all the time. So you have this wonderful uh, conception in the, in the film, which is called um, Innocence of Memories, where you, t where you talk about um, the index and the and indexicality. Could you talk us, tell us a little bit about that? Um, uh, if you live in a city, uh, like me for 63 years, um, uh, that um, um, then your, all of your emotions are intertwined with architecture, bridges, mm. trees, squares, parks, buildings of that city. Uh, and if, if say um, you see a bridge and at that day you are very angry to someone, uh, mm. the next time you see that bridge your anger comes back to you. You fall in love and you cross a park and then the next time you cross that park or next time you see that building, that, uh, it triggers um, those architectural or those landscapes of the city, trigger me uh, memories that we've thought we have forgotten. In that way, a city, if you're living in it, uh, as long as I did lived in Istanbul for 63 years in it, a city turns out to be a sort of an index for our memories because uh, uh, all the um, buildings, uh, things, parks, details of the city reminds us of our past. But once these buildings are demolished, these streets are changed, the access to our memories are also destroyed. That's why we object to demolitions, changes to our, city, to our cities, because we don't want to lose our memories. In a way, I'm writing my novels also and doing museums to preserve our memories. Not that I'm nostalgic, but there is a strength, a, a common human uh, desire to protect the, lie, the details of the lives we have led. That's why I made this museum, Museum of Innocence. That's why I'm writing my novels. So the, um, you've finished a series of, of important works uh, in, in the recent years. What, tell us a little bit about the process of coming to a new work for you. How do you start a new... A novel um, is a long process. <laughs> um, uh, um, that a no novel, uh, um, we can imagine in my, our mind's eye a novel as a tree with say 40,000 mm. leaves and many branches and a trunk. One, no one can imagine, preconceive the whole thing in one breath, but it takes years. You start with, say, three, three, uh, three branches and uh, 300 leaves, and as you um, execute and write the details of these, the others come. Uh, for me, a novel um, is not something that you have in one uh, snapshot or one uh, en moment of enlightenment uh, uh, conceived while the idea of a novel may come to you at one point. But uh, it's all about development, writing, rewriting, editing, changing, new inspiration, revisiting the things that you have written, so forth and so on. A novel, human memory is limited uh, as well as human imagination. You cannot um, um, preconceive a 600-page book before it's written. Um, novels um, in the scale that I want to write them and that I want to uh, express myself um, through um, are invented, um, realized, um, um, not in one single uh, imaginative moment, but a slow and deliberate patient, uh, patience. Uh, thank you for this engaging conversation. We look forward to the next novel. It was a joy to talk to you, Erda. Thank you.